Hello everyone, it's Monster Bloba coming at you with another Kinder Traits video. This time we're doing July 29th, 2022 Community Newsletter. So, let's get right into it. First off, we have the Combat Arena section. We hope you're enjoying the new patch. The Combat Arena Alpha, this patch brings some much needed improvements to controller sport, the feel of melee combat, and how smoothly you can stream the abilities together. I haven't actually had a chance to play the patch yet, but it looks good on paper, at least in my opinion. We've also given the setting page a complete overhaul with new settings, art, and improved key bindings. Last but not least, we've introduced Lock-On 2.0, a new version of Lock-On mechanic that aims to improve the feel of combat while correcting the shortcomings of its previous incarnation. You can read all about it in the patch notes. We're already looking ahead to see what we can include in our next patch. The main features to look forward to is a significant improvement to performance, nearly double the current. We want to fix up some bugs and consider adding P2P to private matches in order to test its connectivity. We'll still be allowing players to play public matches on dedicated servers because we'll be working on a lot of new tech for performance improvements. We expect this patch to take some time to be ready for at least. Thank you in advance for your patience. That is fine. I'm glad that they, you know, gave us the heads up though. I really appreciate that level of communication. Yeah. Sometimes things are going to take a while, and it just makes the wait easier, I guess, and if they let us know ahead of time. also helps me schedule my videos, so I know I can build a significant backlog without having to worry about you know, patch creeping up on me. Like, I actually have a little bit of a backlog right now because this patch creeped up on me. So far, we've already made a handful of small improvements and bug fixes. They'll be included in the next patch. Minion health bars will be updated to only show when minions are damaged. Friendly minions now display green health bars, while enemy minions display red. That's pretty useful. Dash attacks use different origins for their climbers, so the kinfolk has to climb with enemy instead of using collide or that in front of the kinfolk. And the twister now travels much better along uneven terrain and will continue to travel on the ground when launched from the air towards the ground. That That's great. Twister did have some jankiness to it. That's going to make it a lot better single player we have finished our current stage of compatibility and optimization work with the switch in the combat arena we're definitely going to revisit this constantly as we go forward but for now we've reached a stable 30 fps even in the combat with multiple enemies next sprint we'll be spending a fair amount of time fixing bugs on the pc version that have cropped up from switch compatibility issues after that we'll be working on any compatibility issues with the switch version has the single player side of the game we've completely overhauled npc patrolling to work with the new patrol pass that we mentioned in our last newsletter and npcs have now been given the option to follow daily schedules NPCs can play defined animations at points in the patrol paths. This framework has, this framework should also helpfully allow, hopefully allow NPCs in the future to be able to interact with defined objects in the world via animations, inverse kinematics, and head look. We made some additions to utility AI. There are now combat entry actions, which are actions the NPC will only take when it first enters combat. We added the ability to define action combos in the Utility AI Editor interface so that a series of actions can be defined for an NPC to follow during certain conditions. These improvements allow us to make NPC encounters more varied and interesting. In addition to these NPC AI improvements, we're also working on allowing NPCs to better target multiple players when fighting in co-op situations. We're really excited about how character customization is progressing. We picked out 16 skin tones, 12 eye colors, 24 hair colors, as well as 10 eye shapes and 8 jaw shapes. We have 3D models capable of swapping out different skin and hair and eye color options. Currently in the process of modeling the different eye and jaw shape options. Next up will be the mouth and nose shapes here, what they look like right now. These are what your base generic 3D models look like for any editing, specifically. The terrain tiles that we added last sprint are looking much better now. They've gone from perfectly flat plains to defined mountains, foothills, grasslands, lakes, and forest. We've also added details like trees, bushes, rocks, grass, and flowers. Everything is still in a rough state, and we'll be spending a ton of time adding unique touches to all the different biomes. But we're thrilled with the progress we made this sprint. Previously, only about half the map was traversable. Now, the full map is. That is a wonderful checkpoint. Thanks for checking in with us. We'll see you next time on August 12th. Until then, take care. But yeah, hearing that the map is now fully traversable, I think that is a wonderful step forward and that we can all be very happy to hear the game is coming along so well. But until next time, this has been Wasting Blue Bus signing off. You have a wonderful day. Goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.